Hello, this is a quick video about the next pieces of my Iron Man suit project. If you have a look at my website, which is xrobots.co.uk, or the YouTube channel, you can see how I made all of the rest of the pieces. But what you'll notice is that there are no legs currently on here. Last time I showed you my shins, which I made with their removable sections. The last piece to make is going to be the thighs, so I have the moulds prepared for those, so let's go out into the shed and have a quick look at them. So I want to make the shins in fibreglass because most of the pieces for the suit are polyurethane, which is cast plastic. However, it's quite bendy, so it's been fine for most of the pieces, but the thighs are quite big pieces, so I want to make them quite light and rigid. So I'm going to do these in fibreglass, which really is quite rigid. Basically, polyester resin is brittle, and you reinforce it with um, fibreglass cloth, and that makes it nice and strong. So it isn't bendy, and it's nice and rigid, and it's lightweight. So normally for fibreglassing, you'd have a mould like this. This is actually the one for the helmet, where you've got the, the mould in two halves. So basically, you can fibreglass in here with a brush, build up your resin, build up your layers of fibreglass fabric, do the same on the other half, then put the two halves together, and then you only have to patch up along the seam line. Obviously, you need to put your hand through the neck hole, so if the mould was together and you wanted to fibreglass with it in one piece, if it was like a glove mould that's one piece of rubber over the item, then you'd have to do all of the work through the, the, the neck hole, which makes it really hard. So this mould's been specifically made in two halves, so it's easy for fibreglassing, doing each half, then putting them together, then just doing the seam line. So here's another mould, which was for the toe of the boot, which I also fibreglassed into. Um, the mould is in basically one piece, but it's quite easy um, to get your hand in because it's open. So, for the rest of the pieces, however, here are actually the thigh moulds. Um, I had originally intended to rotocast them in polyurethane, so what I actually did with these was only made one seam line. So the rigid support mother mould has obviously two, uh, two seams so you can get it apart, but the silicon is only split here. Um, and other than that, it's one continuous piece of silicon that wraps all the way around, so I didn't put another seam in the silicon the other end, which for rotor casting is fine, because you pour in the resin and you rotate the mould around, it coats the inside, uh, and that's how you do the cast. But for fibreglassing, we need to lay up the fabric. So it's going to be quite um, a challenge to basically, although the thigh, the top of the thigh, the hole is quite big and I can get my hand in, um, it's going to be a challenge to lay up fibreglass in there. So, the plan is going to be to rotocast in the top coat, which is basically uh, the gel coat or the first coat you put in, which makes the outside layer of the finished piece. So that's fairly, fairly much liquid, and we can just pour that in and ro rotate it around. So I'm going to get a nice thick gel coat on them, probably three to four coats. And then I'm going to... Um, Basically the plan is to use minimal reinforcement with some very thin fibreglass. So this is fibreglass surface tissue, which is very thin and it'll be very easy to wet through. So I'll do a coat of that. Um, basically then the plan is that we're going to break them out of the mould, cut them in half, because if you remember my other pieces are all in two halves, so the shins I cut in half so the backs and the fronts fit on separately and they fit onto the strapping system. So that's going to be the same for the thighs. So the plan is to do as, as minimal reinforcement as possible through the, uh, through the hole in the end of the mould. Then take the, the, the rigid cast out of the mould, cut them in half, and then go back and use the thicker mat to reinforce them. So I'm not quite sure how well that's going to work out, and I'm going to have to be extremely careful when I demould them that I don't break them. Um, if it's not too bad laying them up, through those uh, thigh holes, then basically I may well reinforce them with this mat, which is a, a multi-axial mat, it's called quad-axial mat, and that's um, obviously a very open weave that's very easy to wet through with polyester resin. So if it doesn't go too badly, I may just go and, go and do everything through the uh, hole in the end of the mould, otherwise the plan is to take them out, cut them in half, and then reinforce them. So, I'll have to get those moulds off the shelf, and we'll get going with that. This is an important safety announcement. If you're doing anything with polyester resin, you should wear a respirator. 
uh, which is a proper face mask with actual filters on and you must make sure the filters are the correct ones here's a, a spare set I don't know if you can read that, but basically you should uh, make sure that it protects you from organic and inorganic vapours and gases. So as well as a dust mask, it actually protects you from the vapour given off by polyester resin. And you should also wear gloves. Okay, so what have we got on the bench? On this side we've got uh, basically our polyester resin and so on. I've got cheap, cheap top coat, uh, which is the grey coat and also standard polyester resin. It's basically the cheapest cheap stuff, economy grade, general purpose. It's not Lloyd's approved, but I'm not building a boat, so I don't really care. And that's the catalyst, which has this handy uh, top where you squeeze a little bit out so you can measure it by squeezing the bottom. It comes up this pipe and you can pour that to mix it. I've got metal trays, which are the sort of thing you get a takeaway in to actually mix the resin in. Um, some of this plastic cutlery that I use as mixing sticks because it's cheap and you can throw it away. I've also got uh, various bottles of acetone which we can use as thinners. And over here I've got a glass pot which I'll be putting the brushes in to clean them out between coats. I have a box of cheap brushes. I've also got one I've cut the handle off so that it fits in here. Which I'll be using to lay up the fiberglass. And I've got my gloves and the respirator. So when I put this on, you're not gonna be able to hear what I'm saying very well. But the first thing I'm gonna do is mix up some top coat in one of these trays, pour it into the mold, rotate the mold around and around, try and coat the inside surface. Then I've gotta do the other mold and then I need to do that around three or four times. So a bit has gone in there, but not nearly enough, so I need to mix up some more and uh, try and do two or three coats. Okay, so I've just dumped some more in there. Just about see that it's completely grey on the inside. So I just need to keep going with that and then uh, basically do the same with the other one. Then we'll lay out some glass fabric. Okay, so there's one of them. Get some light on this. Basically see that the uh, gel coat's all gone off. So now we're gonna lay up some fiberglass surface tissue inside. 
So this time I'm just using normal polyester resin and um, surface tissue which I've cut up and my brush. Yeah, this isn't going to be much fun. Okay, so I've done uh, surface tissue all over, I think. It's a relatively mediocre job due to the uh, accessibility of the mould. Um, I've thrown the brush away because it was the whole handle was covered in it and everything so I'm just going to get another one and cut the handle off and I'm going to uh, attempt to get to any patches I've missed. Um, it really isn't any fun at all so I think I'm actually going to demold it after this um, and then do the original plan of cutting it in half and then reinforcing it. Right it's much later in the evening now so hopefully yeah, that seems fine. Polyester resin's gone off and it's all nice and cool, which means that the uh, catalyst reaction is over. So basically I'm going to try and pull this out of the mould and we'll see what happens. careful with this. Try and get the uh, mother mould off without breaking it. Ooh, there we go. So far so good. Feels pretty rigid. So let's try and peel the silicon off in one piece. Well that'll come off in one piece but whether it ruins the cast is another matter. Looking pretty good so far. <laughs> Just got to be very careful. Ooh. Oh yes, that's fine. Excellent. He says. Oh well, there's a small crack, but I can fix that up when I reinforce it. Ah, excellent. Let's just chop that away. And there we have it. One Iron Man shin, which is the right hand shin. So, it's pretty lightweight. It's fairly rigid actually, but um, Definitely needs reinforcing, but now I can cut it in half along each side and then I'll be able to easily get to the middle to put a thicker fiberglass mat on. So all I have to do now is do the other one, um, demold that, and in the next video I will cut them in half and we'll do the, the rest of the reinforcements.